How many of you out there would like to have the confidence to share your faith with people, no matter what the current conversation topic is? Everybody? Good. Then you're all in the right place here at Bill Explores. For years, I knew I should tell people about Jesus, but every approach seemed so canned. But one day I showed her in the Bible how Jesus talked to everyone he met, but he always started with something they were interested in. He'd end up teaching them about God, but he started where they were. We sat down and reminisced how the kids at church would bring him weird items and challenge him to use it to tell them something about God. I think some adults even got into the game. Last week, Eileen really wanted to put me to the test. And so she suggested that the topic for this week should be the rhinoceros. Why not? Everybody's interested in rhinos, especially if they've ever seen the movie Hatari. I'm ready, are you? Let's dive right in. Well, it may sound kind of strange, but we've actually been around rhinos quite a bit. Besides being a huge, terrifying looking animal, they've really been misunderstood. But where should we start? What's the first thing most people want to know? What they weigh. Well, since this is only a small knowledge nugget of, or a fact snack, as she calls it, we'll use only one of five rhino species for our purposes, the southern white rhino. They're the largest of the rhinos and weigh in at four to 6,000 pounds, one of the largest species on Earth. I also know that they have exceptionally good hearing and can identify something by its smell up to several miles away. However, their eyesight, much like mine, is extremely poor. They can't identify you from a tree at 30 feet. Sometimes it seems that they're charging, but they're really just running up to have a closer look. And another interesting fact that might help you if, if you're caught out in the open with a rhino is how to keep a rhino from charging. Yep. And it works every time. You take away their credit card. <laughs> Bet you didn't see that one coming. Anyway, they also have a pretty tough hide, which ranges from about a half an inch to two inches in thickness. One of the things that surprised me the most about their skin is that when you put your hand in the folds along their body, inside there it's as soft as a newborn baby. I was amazed by that too. It seems like a pretty tough covering. However, it's very susceptible to insect bites and sunburn. That's why you usually find them covered in mud for protection. But unfortunately, mud doesn't work against their only real predator, man. That's the truth. And with humans like us, they don't need any other predators. We're all the danger they can handle, and they're not handling that very well. Traditional Asian medicine has attributed miracle curative properties to rhino horn, much the same as Dr. Smith's cure-all tonic from the Wild West days. In other words, partner, it just ain't true. Rhino horn's been touted as a cure for everything from impotence to cancer, yeah. when really the horns are composed of keratin. Yeah, and keratin is the same stuff as our fingernails. So there's no cure there. But what I don't understand is, since it's not true, why do hunters and poachers still kill them at the rate of two a day? They mainly kill them for their horns. Although some still do it for sport, there's not a lot of sport in using high-powered guns, a crew of assistants, and sometimes even a helicopter to take down one of these animals. Did you know that at the turn of the 20th century, there were over 500,000 white rhino in the world, and today there are fewer than 17,000? Just because of bogus hocus-pocus medical claims. Yep. An ounce for ounce rhino horn, though, is more valuable than gold. An average rhino horn can be valued up to a quarter of a million dollars. Next time I get a manicure, I'm going to tell the beautician to give me the clippings so I can use them to save the rhinos. It's all the same stuff. But what can we do to stop this carnage before it's too late? Well, there are laws against the killing of rhino and the sale of their horns, but there's so much money involved that it makes it very difficult to prevent. Yeah. There are even some game preserves in Africa where each rhino has its own personal bodyguard. But the African continent is so huge that it's almost impossible to watch every single animal. 
In spite of their efforts, the northern white rhino went extinct in 2018 when the last male died, leaving only two geriatric females. Yeah. And you know, they aren't even safe in zoos and wildlife parks anymore. And there they're being bred in captivity. Did you hear how poachers broke into the Paris Zoo, killed a rhino to steal his horn? Extinct. I guess with so many reruns on television and in gaming, where somebody dies and they're back in the next episode, people no longer seem to know what extinct means. I'll tell you what it means. It means they're gone forever because we can't fix that problem. God created everything, so if we destroy any of it, we're out of luck. As intelligent and resourceful as we seem to be, we can't create anything. You know, it all goes back to when God created Adam and Eve. According to the Bible in the first chapter of Genesis, when he finished that one, he told them, prosper, reproduce, fill the earth, take charge. Be responsible for fish in the sea and birds in the air, for every living thing that moves on the face of the earth. So, after hearing that job description, doesn't it seem a little irresponsible to destroy or allow the destruction of any of God's creation? Right after he told them this, Adam and Eve went out and did something that God had forbidden them to do. The rest of mankind has done the same th kind of thing ever since. That was called sin. In order for us to be able to reestablish a right relationship with God, we have to be forgiven. And so God sent his son Jesus to pay the price for our sin. So if you want to avoid eternal punishment and spend eternity in heaven with God, all you have to do is thank Jesus for paying the price for what you've done and ask him to forgive you and enter into you and direct your life. He'll be so happy to do that. Don't forget. He's already paid the price for that gift. It's just up to you to accept the gift. See how that came full circle from rhinos to redemption? If you'd like to know more, you should ask the person who played this video for you or leave a comment below and I'll get back to you personally. I feel like it's that important. If you've gotten something out of this presentation, please hit the subscribe button below and the notification bell next to it so we can let you know about the next episode. Also, if you want to play Stump Bill, please go to the comment section and suggest an animal, vegetable, mineral, or other unusual item, and we'll show you how you can turn it into a conversation about God. We kicked it off with rhinoceros, and I know someone out there can do better than that. Now get out there and keep exploring for God.